Everybody ready? What? I do esteem it a signal honour to present the very first episode of Render Wars for your delectation and delight. This is going to be the pilot episode to which I'll use to begin fine-tuning the format whilst the entrants come in thick and fast for the main show starting soon and hopefully give you guys an idea on what to expect before sending stuff in. TFIRenderWars at gmail.com. See the announcement video for details on how to submit. Links in the description if you want to be a part of Render Wars. Anyone can enter. It's going to be demonetizationally good. And for this episode, uh, the pilot one, we're going to be laying down my own work for judgment. Quite right. This is all me and my own work competing against me and my own work. Uh, obviously, I'm exempt from the contest. This is purely just to begin the show, begin experimenting with the show format and to possibly show you guys what you could be up against and what to expect. And I couldn't think of anything more fitting to start the first ever show with than my first ever render. Not only that, this is the first ever 3D model that I ever did in Autodesk Inventor. This is how I learned the program. YouTube didn't even exist when I did this. I had no training. I literally sat in front of that laptop and modeled that laptop that I was using, which I think this was the first ever release of Inventor to come with the Inventor Studio module and to get this sort of clean, bright, sharp effect. Uh, to get that going, we needed to do this little-known global illumination hack, which involved physically modelling a white ground floor model, making the inventor background white, and then disabling all the lights prior to render. You can even see the extent of that extruded box on the floor there where the shadow ends. It's not great by today's standards at all, so I'll not judge it by today's standards, but this one will always mean a lot to me, as this model right here is how I learned Autodesk Inventor. Next up are some pre-sale renders that I did from around the 2007 era. These were the golden days, man. Thousands of companies still using AutoCAD. Never heard of 3D. And they were ready to be amazed and wowed by the potential of Inventor. So I took some of their AutoCAD drawings in the days leading up to the demo, remodeled their product in Inventor, and we went in hard, dropping the render bomb, and it was like they'd seen a ghost. They'd never seen their products like this before, ever. <laughs> They'd only ever been in wire flat 2D AutoCAD drawn. So these renders here then went on to clinch what was at the time the largest ever Autodesk UK MFG order to go through the national distributor. Again, by today's standards, they've not aged well, but at the time these were admittedly pretty incredible. Some things clearly let them down though on close inspection. Like this trailer here has got some questionable shadow projections. The colours are all off whack, not to mention it's been dangerously dropped in the middle of a major highway with no safety cones around it. Uh, this PCB here has got reflections on areas that just shouldn't have any reflections. This one here, this is one of the first and last interior scenes I did in Inventor, kind of circa 2008. We're trying our best to flog Inventor to an interior design company. I think it might have actually worked but I felt bad about it and then let's fast forward to the TFI days and smooch at some of the render work I've done for the channel this is my RC engine render done as part of the Inventor Studio 2016 tutorial links to all these videos will be in the description if you want to go and check out the renders being made and actually worked on Inventor Studios still pretty shit but it's come a long way since I used it for my first renders in this image I could have made better choices for materials in some areas but the addition of the depth of field for that out of focus effect is is a nice illusion shadow fall off under the model is quite nice it's simple but it's a good clean no thrills render i must say moving away from inventor for now and onto autodesk showcase work rip showcase press f for major sads this is the lamborghini sesto elemento both textured and rendered in showcase again shown in full on my channel Aside from the obvious lack of tread on the tyres, it's pretty good visual. The dark nature of the scene was intentional to mask the difficulty that I had in getting showcased to look good in any kind of bright lighting. But that dark, evil, menacing, turn your back and I'll lack you up with an hatchet nature of a Lamborghini looks almost sinister lurking in the shadows there. The second image is another play on the dark ambience to try and make the most of it. This model wasn't the best to work with, if I'm honest. It was missing brake discs, missing calipers. So if the scene became too bright, you could see that it was missing those objects and it completely ruined the immersion. What you can't see is Derek Akora just out of the scene with his delusional production team chasing these obviously paranormal ghostly orbs, but overall it's uh, it's not a terrible render. I wouldn't be happy to submit this in for any commercial work, not sure how I feel about the overexposed bloom going on in the background as well. The subtle details that make or break a render are missing in this model, which... It, yeah, it's missing quite a lot. No center caps on the rims, the interior looks a bit toyish. The rims themselves feel hollow, like the alloys look thin. 
for some reason. It was fun to do, but it's not one that I sing and dance about. This here is the final render of the Linus Tech Tips Fallout Bomb PC modeled in Inventor and rendered in Showcase on the channel. Look from Linus Tech Tips built a PC in the plastic bombshell, one of the props that comes with one of the special editions of the game, and then I paused the video and modeled this up as a project for the channel. Both Linus and Luke saw this and they approved. One of the better renders that I've done in Showcase, it's still clearly CGI, but the shadows and occlusion on the objects match the environment quite nicely. The depth of field distracts attention away from the busy background and onto the model. I used high res decals so there's no grainy or blocky textures. Yeah, I enjoyed this one. Showcase still let me down with the ground shadows though. The fallout on the on the ground still isn't right and I didn't do a great job of matching the environment lighting to the model. You can see that there's daylight entering the scene on the left side of the of the environment and that would have made sense to cast the light onto that side of the object as well to heighten the sense of realism but again it wasn't for a commercial job so there comes a point with my renders where I just kind of move on after doing just about enough. On to some of my more recent stuff, this one was an absolute hoot. The BMW 666M Alloys from the M4 GTS. Modelled on the channel in Inventor and then again in Fusion 360, this render was traced using Fusion 360, which was my first ever dabbling with it. And I've got to say, I was mighty impressed with how little effort was required to give such quality results in Fusion 360. Talking earlier about poor ground shadow fallout on the showcase outputs, well, this is how it's done. It's still not perfect. There's some un unwanted orange bleed on the ground plane. A weird glitter effect going on around the front edge of the rim but for what was almost a one button press render in Fusion 360 I'm quite happy with this one. It handled the occlusion nicely in the enclosed spaces, the shadow effect darkening towards the lower rim looks quite nice and the decal BMW badge blends in nicely if not a little distorted in places but never mind. And uh, Autodesk for Ed, possibly my new favourite hobby, I utterly adore this program. I'm still learning, there's a lot to learn but wow what you can do with this thing. One of the things I enjoy so much about Vred is the obvious stratospherically high skill ceiling it's got. What I mean by that is you can plow hours of your life into becoming a pro with Inventor Studio, for example, but you're limited in what you can do because the software's turd. But with Vred, a true pro can go to town on it and blow your mind. You can tell what's been done by a pro and then what's been done by a beginner. I'm a beginner, but still, just look at this. This isn't my model, but I partly textured it and manipulated the scene. If you're looking at this and thinking, well, how much better can actually something get from that? Go Google someone called Danny Bullet. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's D-A-N-Y Bullet. Uh, Danny Bullet Vred, and then click the first link. This model is actually provided by Danny, and sorry, I don't know if this name is a male or a female, but this person will show you what a true Vred Pro can do near the top of that skill ceiling. If Danny submits anything that render was... <laughs> Anyway, for this one, I matched the paint from a BMW, it's called Frozen Black, and applied some motion blur at the rims on the scene. Overall, I didn't do too much to this over and above what Danny provided in the sample scene, but it made for an excellent opportunity to learn the ropes. That yellow box that you can see is the region separation. Basically, what happens is it fully renders only what's within that specified area to quicken the process for test passes. For these shots, I experimented a little more with background motion blur and depth of field, which is on another level in red, giving you the ability to simulate lens types such as micro four thirds or full frame specif specify ISO and f-stop amongst others the sheer volume of settings and render variables in red contributes towards that skill ceiling in the journey towards the perfect render which frankly Danny seems to have achieved and finally my personal best this is another one taken from my channel so spoilers may already have been dealt my challenge was to replicate this top gear production photo shot as best as I could using Autodesk inventor bearing in mind inventor is a mechanical design package the idea being can inventor do photorealistic renders with the curveball of course being that what you're looking at isn't actually a photo that is actually the render done 100 using inventor with absolutely no post press processing or filters of any kind again it's not my model the high quality of the model does contribute a massive amount towards the illusion of realism but i deployed a few sneaky tricks to get it looking like this and you can go check out the full video linked in the description inventor's never going to pump out anything close to the quality of red but i was delighted with how these came out i used an ibl which somewhat matched the false background the shadows blended quite well into the scene i really enjoyed working with this model and i love how it turned out in the end annoyingly though this was actually one of my personal best videos that i've ever done on the channel but the youtube algorithm just didn't do me any favors on this one so it didn't get anywhere near as many views as i would have liked links in the description though if you want to check it out but of course the plot twist's kind of been spoiled now and that brings us to the end of the render wars pilot show it's safe to say that not all episodes will be as long as this one as these are my renders and my stories and i can talk for britain but hopefully it gives you a taste of what's to come i've no doubt i'll play with the formatting and the layout as we go but by all means let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below 
below. Let me know which render you like the most. There's going to be no voting for this one, so just sound off in the comments and I'll be sure to take what you got on board as we roll through this first season. And don't forget, if you're interested in submitting your work for Render Wars, the link for the announcement is in the description down below. That video contains all the information you need to know as well as the email address for submission. Thank you very much. I hope you did enjoy this and I'll see you next time. Toodles!